A brownie is one of the most delicious desserts, and I know it is so quick and simple to pull out that box from your pantry, and that's probably what most of you are used to doing. But honestly, with just a couple more minutes, you can make delicious homemade brownies. A lot of the reason people love to buy those boxes is because the consistency and texture is always amazing. They're fudgy, but they don't always have the best chocolate flavor. So today you're gonna learn the basic ways to make a perfect fudgy brownie. And I think once you make these, you are never gonna have those boxes again. Before we start, I always like to have my oven preheated and then I just like to toast some walnuts in. This is of course optional. You do not have to put walnuts on top of your brownies, but I grew up with my grandma always putting a few nuts on top of her fudgy brownies. And this is kind of a variation of her recipe, so to pay homage to her, I have to add the walnuts. You don't have to have them, but they do add a great crunch and flavor to the top. Just toast them up for about five to 10 minutes until you start smelling them in the kitchen. And while they're toasting, you can put all your other ingredients together. To start, you just wanna put some chocolate in a bowl with some butter. I like to use both bittersweet and semi-sweet. I just think it adds a little bit more depth of chocolate flavor and it isn't too bitter and it's also not too sweet. Put that into the bowl with some butter and then just put it in the microwave and keep microwaving it for about 30 second increments until it's completely incorporated and all melted. While your chocolate is starting to melt, you can prepare your pan. Just take a normal 8x8 baking pan and spray it and then line it with parchment. This just makes it a lot easier to pull them out and makes them easier to cut and look more beautiful and really then clean up as a breeze too. Just fold your parchment to fit inside the bottom of the pan and then I like to use these binder clips just to clip it to the side so the parchment isn't flying all over, getting in my way when I'm trying to pour the batter in. Once your parchment's in it, just spray it again just for good measure and then set that aside. In a large bowl, we're just gonna start by creaming together a small amount of vegetable shortening and some sugar. It's kinda hard to cream together the shortening and sugar, and you don't need to do too good a job. Just use a wooden spoon, spatula, or whisk and just break it into the sugar. Once it's kind of combined, you can add your eggs. Mix those in, and then a little bit of vanilla for flavoring. Once your chocolate and butter are combined and before you mix it in, just add a little bit of espresso powder. You probably recall that I use espresso powder in a lot of chocolate recipes. Not because I love coffee or because it adds a coffee flavor, only because it really brings out more chocolate flavor and adds a lot more deeper notes. So if you're one of those people that always says you don't like coffee, don't worry, I understand, but this will not add a coffee flavor at all. Once that's mixed into your chocolate, just pour it right into the egg mixture and then whisk that together until it's completely incorporated. For the dry ingredients, I just like to set a fine strainer right over the top of all the wet ingredients. I add my flour to that, a little bit of Dutch processed cocoa, and just a little bit of salt. Just let that sift right into the mixture and then just fold it together. At this point, you do not want to over whisk or over stir your brownies because they can really become tough and then it'll come out more dry. So just fold it in until it's just mixed in. If you see a little bit of flour in there, that's okay. Once your brownies are just mixed together, you can pour them directly into your prepared pan. Just kind of smooth out the top and make sure they spread to the corners, but you don't have to be too concerned about it. They will level off a little bit in the oven. When my walnuts were done toasted after about five or 10 minutes, I just removed them and let them cool and then gave them a quick rough chop. You don't have to be too precise. And if you like bigger chunks or smaller chunks, you can just really customize this. Just sprinkle them over the top and then place the whole pan in your oven and let them bake for about 25 to 35 minutes depending. Now this is the important part. You wanna make sure not to over bake your brownies. It is so easy to do, and I know if you're anything like me, it took me a long time to learn how to really bake brownies. If you let them go until a wooden skewer comes out completely clean, well, they're gonna be over baked. They're gonna be dry and cakey, and you're gonna think, I'm just gonna make a box mix because it's better. But if you start to learn that when you really start to smell the brownies in the kitchen and smell the chocolate, that means you're getting really close to done. So you want to stick your wind skewer in the center of the brownies, and when it still has a little bit of that fudginess on them, take them out. Do not wait until it's completely clean. 
Once they're taken out, you'll see that they're slightly puffed, but as they cool, they will flatten out. Now, here's the other kicker. You have to wait until they're completely cooled to cut. They will just be too fudgy and just too soft to cut right now. So let them cool for a good hour or two until they're completely at room temperature or even a little cooler if you have a cool spot to put them. And once they are cooled, the reward is so worth it. You can just take those parchment slings right out and cut the brownies whatever size you want. If you're anything like me, the bigger the better. These brownies are so delicious. I love them with ice cream or whipped cream or just by themselves. They are fudgy and have such a good chocolate flavor. As you can see, a homemade brownie really is so simple and you are never gonna need to make one of those box mixes again. Homemade all the way. I can't wait for you guys to try this. If you agree and love this recipe, make sure to click like below. And if you want to see more great recipes from us, make sure to click subscribe and leave a comment. I love to hear from you guys and how you're inspired and what other videos you want to see. I can't wait to see you guys till next time.